My name is Alan Laxton, Chief Training Officer for Ambreed New Zealand Limited. And firstly, congratulations on having been through an Ambreed training course. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy your breeding program from now on. Seeing the cows and milk and progeny on the ground is certainly a great thrill. This film has been put together to remind you of some of the important points that we covered during the course of our week with you. If you reflect back on the first time you put your hand into the rectum of the cow, you've certainly come a long way. Now you are confident with every cow you inseminate, and you will never forget how to inseminate cows, but you may acquire some bad habits, and reference to this video will remind you of the correct techniques. Make sure that both you and the cow are comfortable. Endeavour to carry out your insemination where the cow is in familiar surroundings. Remember to be gentle with her, but confident, for animals seem to sense lack of confidence. Always remember that you are passing a pistolet into the internal organs of the cow. So be surgically hygienic in the preparation of the pistolet and the entry into the vagina. Once the pistolet has entered the vagina, pass it right up to the cervix before you move the other hand forward in the rectum. Taking the hand in the rectum forward and locating the cervix before the pistolet enters the vagina is probably the most common of all insemination faults. You tend to concertina the vagina and entry into the cervix is made very difficult. Once you have made entry into the cervix, guide it through the cervix with your fingers and endeavour to leave the cervix in its most natural position. Remember that forefinger stops the pistolet from penetrating too far. Here we see another illustration of leaving the cervix where it lies in the natural position within the pelvic cavity. If you feel you have penetrated too far through the cervix, because your forefinger wasn't in the right place, do not palpate to try and find the pistolet. Determine where the cervix is and withdraw the pistolet to that point. Remember to make easy entry into the cervix, envelop the vagina around the mouth of the cervix and push it slightly away from you. Depositing semen in the body of the uterus is certainly the best site for conception, but deposit the semen slowly into the uterus. Remember, there are 8 million sperm within that straw, and if you rush them through the small orifice of the pistolet, some may be damaged. We know at Ambreed that there are 8 million live sperm within each straw. It's up to you to get them safely into the cow. Always make sure that your straw thawing is of a high standard. Identify which bull you want to use from the canister with the identification rod in the canister. Then remove the straws and place them in a seto straw thawer. This straw thawer will give between 3 to 7 percent increase in conception rate over normal tap water temperature. Always handle your equipment as hygienically as possible. It's essential to remove all thaw water from the straw before it is placed into the pistolet. Place the straw into the pistolet with the crimped end out and remove it with a straw cutter. Place a sterile plastic sheath over the straw and pistolet and lock it firmly in place. Do not handle the end of the sheath which is going to enter into the uterus. Make sure that everything is working correctly by bringing the semen to the tip of the pistolet. Always keep a loaded pistolet away from any contamination. Lay it on the case so that the end that enters the uterus will not become contaminated with bacteria. Protect yourself from any disease transfer 
with a glove over the arm which will enter the rectum. It also is protection for the cow. Add a liberal quantity of lubricant to the glove when the first cow is to be inseminated. And make sure you have a paper towel for hygienic entry into the cow. You are not always going to be successful with every insemination you carry out. The degree of success will depend, to a certain extent, on the management of your cow herd. Remember that from the time the calf is born, growing them through to target weights is most essential if they are to take their place within the herd. The various breeds of cattle require different target weights but it is so important to achieve these yielding weights either on your own property or if grazed off on contract. If achieved, heifers can be mated a few days earlier than the main herd, giving them a good start in their productive life. Once pregnant, the heifer will still have to grow another 50% through the nine months of pregnancy to reach their target weights at calving. Achieving correct body weights at calving will normally result in a trouble-free birth with the young calf capable of producing to her genetic potential. First calvers should carry at least half a condition score more than the main herd and all cows must be fed increasing quantities of grass as they near calving so that there is no sudden transition to an all grass diet immediately after calving. Cow condition at calving is closely related to early return to estrus post calving. Being able to establish an estrus cycle pattern assists with more accurate heat detection when the mating period commences. Body weight losses will occur after calving, but they should be recovered by the time mating commences. When poor spring growth occurs, up to 40% supplementation is possible without adverse effects on production. But, more importantly, correct body weights at mating normally bring about good estrus displays, making heat detection easier. Remember, heat may only last for 5 hours, and it occurs every 21 days, or 504 hours, so you have a 1% chance of observing heat. Observe heat at the most optimum times, and this is 10 to 20 minutes in the paddock just prior to each milking, for this is a very active period during the cow's day. With beef cows, the best time is when the calf is suckling in the early morning. Draft the in heat cows from the herd and leave them for about an hour and inseminate preferably before 9 a.m but certainly no later than midday. Dairy cows found in the latter stages of heat at the beginning of the milking can be inseminated immediately after that milking. If observed during the milking or just after milking, they are best left to the end of the following milking. This applies to both AM and PM milkings. The use of KMAR heat detectors will help you to determine at what stage of heat the cow is at and more importantly that she is in heat. Tail painting is another good aid for heat detection. With beef cows it is essential to use either KMAR heat detectors or a vasectomized bull fitted with a chin ball marker harness. For the majority of beef cows come in heat during the hours of darkness. But nothing can surpass plain vigilance and observation. AI is by far the best method of improving the genetic potential for increasing production. Today's top sires are nearly 50% better than the average sire was 30 years ago. But it is equally as important for you to select your best females to mate with these sires. Mating your yearling heifers is one sure method of being able to have sufficient heifer calves the following spring to set a selection criteria far higher than your present herd average.
When yielding heifers are AI'd, the selection pressure on the herd can be lifted to a point where only the top 60% are used for replacements. Dairy beef semen over the lower producing cows means no heifer calves are kept later to be culled for low production. Now that you are selecting your own AI sires, you are your own geneticist. Don't get too carried away with the responsibility. The more things you select for, the less progress you will make towards your ultimate goal. Certainly select the best sires available that you can afford, but no more than three or four, for it is easier to correct faults that are common to a line of cattle than it is to correct a multitude of unrelated problems. Paramount in any selection will be the production BIs, and Ambred are proud of their reputation of combining high production indices with high confirmation traits and behavioural characteristics, three important factors for longevity in any cow's life. A long productive life for any cow depends though mainly on her ability to calve annually. And we remind you of the mathematical equation of reproduction to which you contribute more than the cow herself. That equation of A times B times C times D equaling the calves born from one cycle of AI has only one factor, factor B, the cow's own fertility that is not controlled by human management or expertise. Factor A, the percent of the herd detected and inseminated is entirely a management contribution. Nutritional adequacy from birth to first calving, pre and post calving nutrition for strong estrus displays which you must be capable of observing, and your ability to recognize the climatic variations and make decisions accordingly. Factor B, the herd fertility in percent, is largely your responsibility, monitoring such things as mineral deficiencies, parasites and diseases, it is only the, this factor where the cow herself may contribute by being genetically infertile. Factor C, the semen fertility in percent. Ambreed take great care in ensuring that each individual straw is capable of fertilizing the egg. You must handle and thaw each straw correctly to maintain this fertility. Factor D, the technician efficiency in percent, is now entirely your responsibility. You have been taught to inseminate in a manner that we know will bring about the highest possible conception, and we are confident that your results will prove it. We hope you enjoyed your Ambreed AI management course and that you may one day visit one of our centres and meet with more of the Ambry people who are dedicated to assisting you and your families to breed a better future.